Welcome to the Cups of Consciousness show. I am Alea Dow, your host. I'm a doctor of oriental medicine, a sound healer, the author and founder of the Seven Cups of Consciousness. I have produced nine sound healing albums and have recorded over 2,000 meditations online. I am an energy practitioner and help people shift their consciousness using their energetic fields. And this show is all about using your energetic fields to shift your consciousness as well as exploring energetic concepts that help you create a more empowered and connected life. This episode is an energetic session that explores concepts, energetic practices, and protocols that are similar to a prayer, which help you transform particular aspects of your life. When you listen, recognize that some part of you is using your energetic fields to shift your vibration, which in turn shifts your consciousness, your behaviors, your beliefs, how you react and respond. You might even go into an altered state, so use caution if you're driving or doing something that requires a focused mind. With all of this work that I present, remember that it is your energy shifting you in your own unique way. That way you stay in control and empower with your process. So take a deep breath in. Pull yourself into your line of light and explore your inner terrain in a safe and supported space. Let's dive in. Conscious conversation with Alea. This is a time for us to have a casual conversation about energy, to answer questions that might have been coming through through emails in the last several months, and basically just a time to connect and talk about the energetic weather, what we're dealing with, how to navigate through this time of transformation. The very first question that came through um, just as we were beginning this session, this conversation, was how to speak and watch energy at the same time. And actually, before I speak to that very first question, I am going to acknowledge the presence of the guides, the ascended masters, the angelic ones of love and light, holding space for us, holding vigil. As we relay energetic information, we invite your higher self to receive that energetic information in a way that serves you, supports you, and empowers you, and to only extract that which you need. We invite your higher selves to energetically locate a safe, energetic environment in the appropriate dimension, to hold that vibration as you receive this information and reflect that to you here in this physical realm. So coming back to that very first question about getting tongue-tied as you navigate the world, as you communicate with other people, As we become more energetically conscious and more aware of our multidimensional self, literally there's a shift that happens in the way in which we process information and energy. Our right brain, which is that intuitive, the creative, the artist, comes more online. And so we literally want to start holding more of our awareness in that creative part of the brain the right side of the brain when you're communicating, when you're talking, when you're relaying ideas and information to people. So when I'm working in my day, I set up the guy, I set up the grids, the energy, I call in a safe energetic support container. And then I allow my energy self to start perceiving reality from a higher dimensional realm. And I'm actually literally speaking from that place, holding my awareness there. And so when you go to connect and interact with somebody, instead of dropping your awareness down into that 3D physical mini me world of just holding your awareness in that physical plane, let yourself connect with them at the level of your higher self. So you bring all of your awareness into your divine line, that river of light that flows on the front of your spine. You travel up that divine line to your higher self. We are linear beings. Our mind works in linear ways, most of us. But your higher self actually exists in the same time-space continuum right around you. And so by literally pulling yourself into that inner river of light, you start to increase your frequency and then get access to this higher vibrational aspect of you. Then communicate from that place, literally watching the energy of what you're speaking to. Animals communicate using images. And so if you have an idea that you are relaying, 
I invite you to think about what you're talking about all in images. If you're sitting at a restaurant placing an order, show the waiter or the waitress the image of the item that you want and then speak the words. By tracking that image, your words will then be able to follow more clearly. So that's the very first first um, aspect or answer to that question. There's actually another layer to that question, and that is that when we cultivate greater degrees of awareness in these multidimensional realms, we can literally start to get lost. We forget what we were doing. We can't track what day it is or what time it is because it's as if we're taking an elevator and we're going up to a floor, doing a little bit of work there. Then we drop down back into the physical realm. Wait, what was I doing right before I left? And then you literally have to track back to find that link, that line. And so the more self-aware you become, the more aware you are of when you do leave, your awareness leaves this physical experience and goes up into a higher plane, do the work there, then bring your awareness back down. So it's all about cultivating the awareness. And one of the um, supporting factors that can come in is to begin to simplify your life, simplify your environment get rid of clutter, slow things down, try not to schedule so much in the day so that you have a little bit more time to stand in the kitchen, to pause, to go up to that higher realm, make a lovely tone for earth or do your dimensional work or connect in with your guides, gather the information, then bring your awareness back down here into the physical realm and then consciously move in the physical realm. Sometimes when I am working in multiple dimensions at the same time, I will actually have to chant in the physical dimension the task that I'm doing so that I literally don't get pulled off. Or if I have to literally walk 20 feet, there is a high probability that I would forget what I am going to get 20 feet away. And so I will chant screwdriver, 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 until I get myself to the garage and I remember I'm getting a screwdriver. So be gentle with yourself. You are a conscious multidimensional being cultivating greater awareness in multiple dimensions. And so therefore your awareness in the physical dimension might be kind of going in and out a lot as you cultivate that muscle. So that's the answer on that one. Um, Let's take a look at the next question. The next question came through a few hours before this conscious conversation, and it was somebody who has been working very hard on themselves, and they don't feel like aspects of their life have shifted. Their body weight, their money factor, um, they might be feeling really tired, feeling old, and I sensed a frustration in why are these things not shifting for me? I'm working so hard. And I really dropped in and looked at just the general energy of when we have a particular intention that we really want to attain in our physical experience, our physical life, and for whatever reason, we're not able to make that happen, to make the money, to lose the weight, to feel younger, whatever it is. We want to actually back up And think about the quality that we are really, really after. So there was two layers to this. One, I heard there's internal conflict. So some part of us might want to weigh less, but maybe the body doesn't, body David doesn't want to weigh less or the team doesn't want to weigh less. And so we have to get all three of the energies, you, your body, and your team on board for a particular vibration. And then you also really want to hunt down what that frequency is, what that vibration is that you are soup, that you are really, really intending on cultivating and acquiring. So for example, if I want to make more money in my life, I would think to myself, I want to make more money. If I were to make more money, how would I then feel? I'd feel free. I'd feel safe. I'd feel supported. I'd feel happy. I would have more um, freedom for my creative expression. I'd be unlimited. So now I'm, I'm just kind of going deeper. It feels more like it's that freedom of creative expression. 
So what I'm doing is I'm putting all of my issues around the freedom for my creative expression or lack thereof onto money. Money will reflect to me that projected heavy weighted vibration. And so if I lift all of my attachment and my expectations for having a free creative experience off of money, and I start to hold that vibration in my divine line of cultivating that creative freedom, that limitless creative flow in my divine line, instead of looking to money to get that need met, I'm meeting that need internally every single day activating that vibration but you will again have to get all three energies getting your body to a nature spirit to activate that particular vibration for itself in its own divine line and inviting your team to activate those vibrations in their own selves if there is a peace component layer in your life that you haven't been able to shift or manifest that is a possibility a probability that you might be carrying an issue that is not yours it might be an ancestral issue and you can only shift the issues that are yours so the very first step is to get your soul essence in alignment with the appropriate vibration then have a conversation with your body deva body deva if we were to have more money how would that then feel to you and help the body unpack that issue then Do the work with your team, help your team unpack the issue that they might have with any money or whatever it is, body weight, aging, beauty, vitality, health, whatever the issues are, unpack it for you as a soul, your body, your team. Then invite your higher self, your body, Davis, higher self, and your team to release any issues around that vibration, money, body weight, aging, illness, health, relationships that is not yours, your bodies, or your team, and release that. You can do energetic protocols and meditations for releasing ancestral issues or issues that are not yours. So that those are the pieces that I was kind of tuning into when there are specific components in your life that aren't changing. Make sure that you're really locating the vibration that then has the capacity to create that in your outer world and Make sure that you're not carrying a block that doesn't belong to you because you won't be able to shift blocks that aren't yours. Hopefully that helped. Okay. Looking at the next piece. How many times have you come? Here we go. Okay. Another question came through about when you have a conversation with somebody who says they're open who says they're highly evolved, who's been doing all of this spiritual work for years and years and been going to Esalen and the Omega Institute and taking courses or reading books, or maybe they're a spiritual teacher themselves. And you start having a conversation with them and you might start start sharing your experience, your pearls, and you might even start making suggestions to them. Before you even make a suggestion, you might be able to feel kind of a resistance to, no, I don't want to get any of your suggestions. I don't want to know about the book that you just read that you think will help me. We want to be very, very careful. And actually, this goes with any kind of conversation with anyone, whether we're talking about spirituality or health or relationships or career or how to move forward in your life. The very first step that we want to move into is complete and total attachment and desire for our own internal reality, total responsibility for our own internal reality, not theirs. If we feel like we have energetic information for them, we then want to invite our higher self, our body, Davis, higher self, and team to send that energetic information to them at the level of their higher selves where they have the capacity to receive it. Just send the energetic packet. If you don't feel like they're open to hearing your words, it could be that they're already full and integrating the last 10 years or the last 20 years. I know that for myself personally, I went through an enlightenment experience in 2001 and I was just a sponge for about five or six years. I did energetic protocols all day. I went to every single seminar I could I could attend and afford. I read every single book I could get my hands on in terms of energy and spirituality and consciousness. And after about seven or eight years of just being this incredible sponge of more, 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 I couldn't get enough, I hit my full point. And my guides even said, Alea, that's it. You're cut off. Go within, integrate. 
And literally in the last five years, I really haven't read any books about energy. I haven't been attending any seminars. I'm still integrating those six, seven, eight years of acquiring information. So if you don't sense that someone's open, it might be that they are full and they're still integrating all of the information that they've been gathering in the last 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And then there's the phenomenon of spiritual arrogance, where someone thinks that they're so evolved that no one has anything to teach them. That's an interesting phenomenon. And I would just kind of have compassion for them. It also might be more of a protection mechanism that they have in place. They may have had their power taken away by a spiritual teacher, healer, doctor, lover in the past. And so by not being open, by being the authority, they maintain a certain sense of protection and safety. So kind of think of it maybe as a protection mechanism that they have in place. And again, to not be attached or desiring to change them, to impress them. If they want the information, let them ask. And the other way that I handle it is, oh, I have an insight about something. If at any point in time you want that insight, you just let me know and I'm happy to share it with you. And then I change the subject and we go on to a different topic or they say, oh my God, yeah, I totally want that information. If they say to me, I totally want that information, I check, do they really want the information and how much information do they really want? They might just want a one liner and then I send the rest of that energetic information to them at the level of their higher selves. So before offering, before suggesting, say, well, if you, if you want my opinion, just let me know or I have a hit on that, or I have my own personal experience about that. Um, if you want that information, just let me know. And then carry on as opposed to holding the weight. Make it safe for them to say no. Here we go. Good. Okay. Next question. And if I answer any of these questions and then that brings up another question, just let me know. Hmm. The next question was actually something that I've been pondering for hmm, a couple months now about the body deva. And in Native American traditions, they talk about animal totems and that everybody has an animal totem. And when I started to look at that a little more closely, I actually saw that the body deva nature spirit is a multidimensional being, we know that, but in another dimension, your body deva has a higher self. And in a different dimension, it actually has the capacity to express itself as a nature spirit animal, fish, maybe an insect, a butterfly. So it's literally this other aspect. It's a different dimensional aspect of your body deva. It's not a separate animal totem. Your body deva using its multidimensional self has the capacity to morph into an animal, a different vibrational being. Last night I was lying in bed and I said to my body deva, body deva, what do you want to go morph into in dream time? And she said, I want to go be a snake, which is all about the kundalini and the sexuality and the healer, the creative. It's got a lot of power to it. My physical body birthday is on Saturday. And so the snake really made a lot of sense. And also the snake sheds its skin. And so it's about this death, this birth, this renewal. And so instead of questioning it or getting frightened by the snake energy, I just invited my body Dave at the level of her higher self to morph into the snake. And then I just kind of watched her be this very powerful snake and do whatever she needed to do. And when we give our body Davis permission in a higher realm to embrace that other nature spirit, it then has the capacity to access vibrations that, that serves it, that supports it, that empowers it and heals it. So a really neat exercise meditation might be to invite your body, David, to identify the nature spirit that it would like to morph into. And again, that will change as your body, Deva, evolves. Kind of a cool piece on that one. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 
Um, my husband and I, Doug, are going to start doing a right relationship reboot once a month. So if you have partners and you need tools for dealing in your um, dealing with your partnerships in a peaceful way, feel free to tune in. We're going to start that in November once I've caught my breath after writing the book. Okay. Make it love. Make it light. Make How to respond to jealousy. This next question has to do with how to respond to an attack from somebody who is jealous of you. Somebody who is jealous is not appreciating and embracing their own spiritual gifts. They're also putting their reference points on you and wanting what you have. Anytime you feel jealousy from somebody, that is an indicator that they are actually wanting information from you and for you to model the solution in your own fields instead of giving your tools away to them or making yourself small or not being happy because they don't they don't have the happiness. I see that a lot in the world of, well, I can't be happy because they're really angry and really upset and how dare I be happy when they're so unhappy. And again, what is really being asked for is for us to move internally into our inner rivers of light, to activate the vibration of all of our spiritual gifts, wisdom, and mastery. Make sure that all of your gifts, wisdom, and mastery are completely and totally on your own field, not on the person that is feeling jealousy or wanting to attack you. Hold all your gifts on yourself. Increase the appreciation of your own gifts, of how hard you've worked in your spiritual growth, your evolution, attaining a particular vibration inside yourself. And then model that in your field. Invite your higher self to send that to their higher selves. And then hold a compassionate space for them as they are entrenched in the energy and the behavior of not appreciating their spiritual gifts their wisdom, their unique perspective, but keep modeling the solution and holding compassion. And then your reactivity, your charge, your fear around their attack, their jealousy will actually go away. Also, if somebody's jealous of you or attacking you, actually more attacking you, that is an indicator that perhaps in a previous incarnation, you traumatized them you attacked them, and you're now carrying a fragment of their energy, or you're carrying responsibility for them from any incarnation, for you, your body, and your team. Invite your higher self, your body, Davis, higher self, your team to return that fragment of them, their body, their team, their ancestors, their spiritual family, back to them where they have the capacity to receive it, along with all relevant and appropriate information. And then you can ask for a release of any negative karma between the two of you, the activation of the spiritual lesson, and then invite them at the level of their higher selves to the degree that they choose in your higher self to update the reference points so they don't keep coming coming at you. So people will attack us if we're carrying fragments of their energy from the past, if we're carrying responsibility for them, if we're attached and desiring for their reality, which immediately puts us into the place of being responsible energetically for them. Why else would someone attack us? We We have asked them to show up in our life to help us move into greater degrees of empowerment. Fire them from that job. Let it go. You get to take full responsibility for moving into your own power in your own unique way instead of having to employ them to attack you, to trigger greater empowerment for you. Here we go. I'm just thinking about why else somebody would attack Yeah, retrieve the responsibility for whatever spiritual lesson you would gain from that. If you are attached or desiring to teach them a lesson, they could come at you and you would then be um, interwoven into their spiritual growth and evolution. So you would again release the responsibility and the attachment for their process, their behavior, their attitude and hold your own, hold total attachment and responsibility for your own growth, your own evolution, and your own vibration. It's much cleaner, and we actually move into greater degrees of energetic integrity. Integrity is kind of my favorite word, and it's something that um, every day I practice. 
I'm not 100% perfect at it, but whenever I start to get attached or desiring for another person's reality, I realize I'm out of energetic integrity. The moment I attach to someone else's reality, I then immediately take responsibility for them. I just did, I just disempowered them. Totally out of integrity. And so by lifting my attachment and my desire off of them and returning that responsibility and modeling the solution in my fields, I move into greater degrees of integrity. And when I'm not attached to somebody else's reality, I'm only responsible for my own. I hold all of my gifts completely and totally in my own field. I move into a much greater degree of protection and empowerment. Nothing can get in. There's no holes. There's no hooks. There's no open doors totally protected and also totally internally open to myself, which then means that I have a capacity to be open to others, but from that really clean, clear, empowered place. The other one is when we have expectations of somebody, we want a need to get met by them. So I want somebody to respect me. I want somebody to listen to me. I want somebody to appreciate me. I want somebody to support me or love me. And actually, that's no one else's job but my own. And so as you move in your life, start asking yourself the question, where are you looking for your needs to be met externally instead of meeting those needs internally in your own divine line? Same for your body, same for your team. The next question came through a few hours before this conscious conversation and it was somebody who has been working very hard on themselves and they don't feel like aspects of their life have shifted. Their body weight, their money factor, um, they might be feeling really tired, feeling old, and I sensed a frustration in why are these things not shifting for me? I'm working so hard. And I really dropped in and looked at just the general energy of when we have a particular intention that we really want to attain in our physical experience, our physical life, and for whatever reason, we're not able to make that happen, to make the money, to lose the weight, to feel younger, whatever it is. We want to actually back up and think about the quality that we are really, really after So there was two layers to this. One, I heard there's internal conflict. So some part of us might want to weigh less, but maybe the body doesn't, body David doesn't want to weigh less or the team doesn't want to weigh less. And so we have to get all three of the energies, you, your body, and your team on board for a particular vibration. And then you also really want to hunt down what that frequency is, what that vibration is that you are soup, that you are really, really intending on cultivating and acquiring. So for example, if I want to make more money in my life, I would think to myself, I want to make more money. If I were to make more money, how would I then feel? I'd feel free. I'd feel safe. I'd feel supported. I'd feel happy. I would have more um, freedom for my creative expression. I'd be unlimited. So now I'm, I'm just kind of going deeper it feels more like it's that freedom of creative expression. So what I'm doing is I'm putting all of my issues around the freedom for my creative expression or lack thereof onto money. Money will reflect to me that projected heavy weighted vibration. And so if I lift all of my attachment and my expectations for having a free creative experience off of money, and I start to hold that vibration in my divine line of cultivating that creative freedom, that limitless creative flow in my divine line, instead of looking to money to get that need met, I'm meeting that need internally every single day, activating that vibration. But you all, again, have to get all three energies, getting your body, divine nature, spirit, to activate that particular vibration for itself in its own divine line and inviting your team to activate those vibrations in their own selves. 
If there is a peace component layer in your life that you haven't been able to shift or manifest, that is a possibility, a probability that you might be carrying an issue that is not yours. It might be an ancestral issue and you can only shift the issues that are yours. So the very first step is to get your soul essence in alignment with the appropriate vibration, then have a conversation with your body, Deva. Body, Deva, if we were to have more money, how would that then feel to you and help the body unpack that issue? Then... Do the work with your team, help your team unpack the issue that they might have with any money or whatever it is, body weight, aging, beauty, vitality, health, whatever the issues are, unpack it for you as a soul, your body, your team. Then invite your higher self, your body, Davis, higher self, and your team to release any issues around that vibration, money, body weight, aging, illness, health, relationships, that is not yours, your bodies, or your team, and release that. You can do energetic protocols and meditations for releasing ancestral issues or issues that are not yours. So that those are the pieces that I was kind of tuning into when there are specific components in your life that aren't changing. Make sure that you're really locating the vibration that then has the capacity to create that in your outer world and Make sure that you're not carrying a block that doesn't belong to you because you won't be able to shift blocks that aren't yours. The next question that I want to speak to is about the body, or rather you, when you get into a situation that's frightening. I call it kind of the 911 moment. And somebody emailed me uh, today and asked me what happened. She was on a boat. There were big waves. Everyone else was pretty calm. She freaked out, and her body went into full-on fight-or-flight panic mode, panic attack. And when our body goes into that panic, that fight-or-flight, that full adrenal response, and it's not really called for, meaning the situation doesn't make sense, we're overreacting, what's happening is the situation, the environment, triggered a memory from a previous event, either in this incarnation or in a previous incarnation. If it's a physical freak out, then it's probably your body. Maybe it's your soul. Maybe it's the team. You always want to track where it's really coming from. You can also just say, okay, all three of these energies, you, your body, and team, go back in time to that event, that original event that triggered the upset, the fear, the 911. And ask for healing holograms to be placed around that event, activating the vibration of the spiritual lesson. If you can think of that one-liner, that little protocol in your 911 moment, that will begin the process of helping you heal it. The next process that you can go through when you're in that 911 is first become aware that you're freaking out. The second piece is to allow it and embrace it, to not fight it within reason. Then the third piece, once you've let yourself ride through those waves, actually let me speak a little bit about that. The emotions that we have in life are energy. Emotion is energy in motion. It is fuel. It is gasoline. We have the capacity to use this energy in motion, emotion, to move us forward and up into a higher consciousness. Our body, our physical human form, also uses emotions to move all of the vibrations in its cells forward and up into a higher vibrational way of being a higher consciousness. And so when you feel those emotions, imagine surfing those emotion, emotions like waves, literally moving you forward and up, you, your body, and your team. So that's how you, you surf the frequencies. So just coming back to when your body is in a triggered experience, you surf the emotions, you first acknowledge it, allow it, surf the emotions, and then... Let your mind go through the process and take it full circle. You're in this situation. Ask yourself, what is the worst case scenario of what could happen in this situation? It could be dying. It could be losing a loved one. It could be uh, experiencing pain. It could be suffering. Whatever it is, get to the deepest root of that which you don't want to have happen. And then, once you've hit the deepest root that might make you sob and shake, 
Ask yourself, what is the solution of this vibration? What's the opposite? So if you were to die, then what? Well, you'd actually then be in a more connected state. You'd be surrounded by the angelic realm. If you keep going into darkness, 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 eventually what's going to happen? Take 2,000 years to sit in that, that space. Eventually you always come back to the point of connection. So determine what it is your soul is really attempting to embody. What is the vibration you're determined to embody using this traumatic situation? And then start to activate that vibration of connection or truth or trust or empowerment or self-love in your divine line, same for your body and your team. If you do have the capacity to think clearly in that 911, because you might not be able to, but if you do, try to identify where this fear is coming from. Is this yours? From this incarnation, from a previous incarnation, go and heal it. Does it belong to your body, Deva? Something your body, Deva, has not healed? Does this actually belong to your team? Does it really belong to your team? Are they just holding it because they have some memory of some ancestral energy? Is it the trauma of an ancestor and they're processing their trauma on you in this event? So that can be a little harder to weed out in the moment, but maybe after the fact, let yourself ask those questions and explore where it's truly coming from. Good. In the seventh conversation you mentioned, the body goes through um, a process of review as the souls do. Um, actually, when the body, Dave, is conscious, um, it can. Yeah, that's a good question. The next question is, again, about the body, Deva. And... Um, when the body deva reaches a certain level of consciousness, it starts to go through a life review at the end of this incarnation. I think of Earth as a conscious sentient being and she's becoming more and more conscious and all of her creatures on the planet are becoming more and more conscious. And when a soul or an energy is not very conscious, the life review is very short. There's not a whole lot of reflection. And the more conscious somebody becomes, the more reflection there is, the more time there is to ponder, what was I really after? And what would happen if we activated the vibration of that spiritual lesson before I go back down into the experience or before I sign up for my next, my next trip? And so your body, Deva, nature spirit, as it recognizes its own consciousness, it too then has the capacity to unpack all of the events, activate the spiritual lessons from previous incarnations, from previous experiences when it it journeyed with you in this world. I think of the body deva as a nature spirit that we get every time we come to this or to this world, it's sort of like a rental car. You get the same car, but the model changes and the color might change, but the company is the same. It's like the earth hurts rent a car. And she has assigned you with a particular nature spirit to journey in the physical human form every time you come to the planet. The variable is that when we leave the planet, the body, Deva, nature, spirit goes back to earth. We then continue to explore, learn, and evolve in between lives, in other places, and other realms. Then when we're ready to come back here into this world, we have accessed files that are new, that are fresh. And so usually our next incarnation is spent updating the body, Deva, of this higher consciousness of this more evolved way of being. But wouldn't it be lovely if at the age of one or two, or even in the womb, we invited our higher self to share all of those little pearls that we've cultivated between the last time we left the body and then coming into the body so that the body Deva can hold the same level of consciousness that we hold instead of using the entire life to slowly hold and update the body Deva. Usually the body Deva is a few steps behind our soul in its evolution. It's usually not as evolved as our soul. And I actually was having a conversation with a friend of mine about kids doing um, a bunch of hallucinogens. And I remember in college, you know, everybody's doing ayahuasca and peyote and shamanic rituals and not in the most shamanic way, but needless to say, um, 
I was looking at that desire of wanting to do all of these drugs and I realized that it's this yearning to wake up the body to a greater degree. It doesn't really work very well and it can get really funky and weird and dangerous if the body actually wakes up before the soul. Ideally, you want the soul rider to be more awakened and then slowly, gently, lovingly, and compassionately wake up the physical human form, body deva. Imagine having a horse that's more awake than the rider. It could be a little rough. I recommend having the rider be a little more awake than the body deva, or at least that, that they match, that they are even levels of consciousness. So that was a long, a long answer to that question. But hopefully, maybe 3311, that answered your question. Okay. What happens to people who take their own lives? Does that um, act change if they are a teen or very elderly? Another question that somebody's asking is what happens to someone when they take their own life? And it varies depending on the soul and depending on the true intent. Sometimes people will take their lives because they're angry at other people or because they're not taking responsibility for their life, they want everybody else to be responsible for their life. Or they've given responsibility for controlling their life to everybody. Or they have parents, families, communities that are super controlling of them. And so that act is literally trying to get that responsibility back, trying to get that control back. So what do they do? They take their life. The variable is do they take it as a way to hurt somebody else or are they simply trying to attain a very particular vibration inside themselves so i don't have a, a positive or a negative view on suicide i know it's very traumatic for the people that are impacted when when you have a loved one that does take their life but the soul what i focus on is what was the soul truly intending on embodying in that act and then holding the most compassionate, loving space for them to attain that vibration. And when we're here in the physical world, we we forget how incredibly potent and powerful we are. We have the capacity to shift the vibrations in the higher realms. The prayer of somebody who is in physical human form, it's gonna make me cry, is so powerful for a being that's on the other side. So if you've lost somebody that's on the other side and they're still struggling, ask that they activate the vibration of their spiritual lesson to the degree that they choose, that they release all of their their upset, their pain, their suffering. When we make a request in the physical dimension for energy in the higher dimensions to change, it happens. So use it. We're, we're literally in a microphone and we can feel the vibrations. We can feel the effects of these other realms. And therefore, it, 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 that's the reason why we have the capacity to make these requests. And so um, use your power. Use your power to always, though, bring energy into greater degrees of connection to the degree that the individual chooses in a way that supports them, in a way that's gentle and loving, as opposed to you putting your agendas or your attachments on their journey whatever supports their greatest happiness. There's another question um, that came through about what's the difference between the higher self, the spirit, the soul, and the higher self in the other dimensions. Uh, So I've heard uh, someone say that the higher self is just you as an angel. And how is the higher self different from guides? And what's the best way to connect with the higher self? Up a little bit. We all have a little spark in the heart of source, the heart of God, the heart of the divine, the, the, the realm of oneness, whatever you want to call it. Every single one of us has a little spark. That spark creates a line. That line travels through multiple dimensions. I call that your, your energy self in multiple dimensions. And then if you choose to incarnate into the physical human form, that line runs through the top of your head down the front of your spine, out your base chakra, into the heart of earth. It loops all the way back up to the heart of source. 
to your little spark in the heart of source where you express yourself from. So actually this whole experience that we're having is a reflection. A lot of the ancient texts and um, spiritual texts talk about everything's an illusion. But I actually um, am going to make an adjustment to that statement. Everything's a reflection. And so the only true thing that we really are is that little spark in the heart of source. And then we are reflecting our light as a spark down through multiple dimensions. Our higher self exists in a higher dimension, not the physical dimension. It's our energy self. It's part of our essence, an expression of our essence, a reflection of our essence. And then our line travels down the front of the spine. And then when we are in the physical experience, we are expressing our essence, but in the form of our soul. So it's sort of like the essence spark is number one. Essence is number two. Soul is number three. And the spirit energy actually feels more like the the consciousness of the physical human form. It's the body deva nature spirit. And so we have our soul essence in our divine line on the front of the spine. We have the nature body, sprite, spirit. It feels more like a spirit to me that's part of earth, the soul of earth, the essence of earth. The other question was, how do I get in touch with my higher self? You inhale. When you're in the human body, you inhale. You bring all of your awareness with your inhale into your divine line. You bring your energetic eyes, your awareness, you close your eyes and you pull yourself into that inner river of light. You just imagine it. You invite your higher self to work with your energetic fields and the guides to pull all of your anchors, your awareness off of everyone and everything and into that divine line, that river of light where you do reflect and express yourself, where your light runs. And so the more you're holding your awareness in your divine line, the more connected you're going to feel the more access you will have to all of the resources that you would ever need. It's all in your inner river. The less you will be in suffering, the more abundant you'll be, the more joyful you'll be. Every single vibration your soul yearns for is in your inner river of light. And so the only question is, are you going to use your breath, your inhale, to pull yourself into that river and then activate those vibrations, receive those vibrations vertically and internally? Hopefully that answered those questions. Good. Um, We've got a couple minutes left. And um, how do we embrace our shadow aspects that are coming up and heal them? Good question. There's another question about how do we heal the the shadow aspects of ourself when they come up? And I, I don't really use the word shadow very much. There might be aspects of ourselves that feel discordant, that don't feel in alignment with our essence, feel funky, negative, lower vibrations. And I say that with a little scrunched up nose. I don't judge those pieces. I simply look at those aspects of ourselves or that behavior as an opportunity for growth and evolution. It's my next enlightenment nugget cookie. So if I'm in a store and I'm unkind to somebody, At the end of that interaction, if I can't auto-correct, I walk out of the store, I sit in my car, and I unpack it. Why did I just respond the way in which I did? What is my soul really intending on mastering? Where do I need to be more kind to myself so I have the capacity to be kind to another? Was I asking that person to respect me, and that's not their job, and then cultivate greater degrees of respect inside my own self? And so every single incident that we have that doesn't feel comfortable and joyful and fully connected with our essence, it is an opportunity to actually take you into a deeper place of connection with that essence aspect of you that is so perfect and beautiful and whole. So think of the shadow as opportunities for growth and evolution. Unpack them, milk them for every single thing they're worth, and um Also think of your traumas in previous incarnations and in this incarnation as opportunities for growth and evolution. We literally, every single one of us, we have experienced enough trauma to essentially get us to the top of the mountain, of the Enlightenment mountain. You don't have to go collect more. Just unpack that which has happened. I was talking with my husband a couple months ago and asking him about something that happened in the past. And he said, oh, no, I don't want to think about that. That's just too painful. 
And I was like, oh, would you then want to create another situation that gives you the opportunity to activate the spiritual lesson? Or would you like to unpack that which has already happened? And I didn't ask him that in the moment, but we had a conversation about it later. And um, so if you think about things that have happened in the past that are just too painful to go to, start asking yourself the question, why did you call that in? What is the spiritual lesson? And I say the word spiritual lesson, but it's really what is the vibration your soul is really determined to attain? We're here in this world having experiences to attain particular vibrations in our divine line. Activate that vibration, and then the trauma is no longer the trauma. Good. I think I want to talk about the energetic weather. Thank you for wishing me happy birthday. Um, your body, Dave, is doing yoga. And you're having an empathic experience. Um, so yesterday, my husband said, do you want anything for your body? And I said, well, let me ask, because it's my body day of his birthday. And I said, body David, do you want anything? And she's like, I want a spa day. And so I said, my body David wants a spa day. So have conversations with that unique consciousness, unique and different consciousness than you. Okay. <laughs> Just looking at somebody's comment. I've seen horses with inexperienced ride riders. Not a good combo. Okay, let's let's dive into the energetic weather. Ancestral karma, send it back. It's not yours. How many times have you come? Yeah, I'll speak to that. There's a question about karma and how to release karma, ancestral karma that's not yours or just how to release karma. And I actually think of karma as a fairly inefficient, usually a fairly uncomfortable mechanism for growth and evolution. I personally would rather wake up in the morning and ask myself, what vibration do I want to embody and attain today? instead of having to use outer events, the outer world. And so when we stop putting the responsibility for our growth and evolution on our outer world, on our body, on our relationships, on our finances, and we start taking personal responsibility for attaining those vibrations in our own divine line, our life starts to get really simple, no drama, not intermingled in projection and weightiness. And so... The daily practice, uh, actually it's why I do the daily meditations, is because it brings your focus to what is the vibration I want to cultivate in my divine line today. And the more we do that, the freer our outer life becomes and the clearer a reflection our outer life becomes of these higher vibrations that we're holding inside ourselves. So I don't know if that really answered the question on karma, but... You don't need to use karma as a mechanism for growth and evolution. You get to just use vibration, activating the vibration in your divine line. So I'm switching gears here a little bit and looking at the energetic weather of what's coming up. A few days ago, we moved into the new moon in September and on October 5th, I think it is, either 4th or 5th, we go into Mercury retrograde. And when I tuned into this new moon that happened the other day, it actually feels like we're entering into a new year, a new cycle. I feel like we're already in 2015. And the lovely, cool thing is that we literally have four weeks of prepping for 2015. So this week, the week of the new moon, we're getting really clear on our intentions. What do we really want to attain and embody inside ourselves and in our outer world in 2015? So use these next few days to get really, really clear on your intentions of what you want to attain in the next 12 to 13 months. And then as we go into Mercury retrograde, once you're clear on your intentions on October 5th, use those next three weeks to organize, to put everything into place 
so that when we come out of Mercury retrograde, you can literally launch into all of those behaviors, all of that energy, all of those activities, all that consciousness that you had the intent to link into. So you don't actually have to start it while Mercury is retrograde, but pull out the paints, clean out the clutter, buy the food that you want on your new diet, um, get the books of learning how to make kefir or whatever it is. So really organize, 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 organize for the next three weeks in Mercury retrograde. Use today, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or whenever the fifth is to get really clear on those intentions. We have till, till the 5th of October to get clear on those intentions. And then um, simplify, streamline, get everything ready for kind of a, a fast pace that kicks up in November. When I look at 2015, because we get all of this prep that we can do while Mercury's retrograde, it feels like a year of great accomplishments internally and externally. It's like the struggle is gone because we've taken so much time to prepare. In the higher realms, while Mercury is retrograde, you can invite your higher self, your body to his higher self, and your team to be setting up the grids for your intentions. We'll bring in some daily meditations to support that. Breaking through the greatest struggles, things that you've been struggling with for years. 2015 really feels like this is the year it breaks through. 2014 has really been a year of the body deva, really awakening to a greater degree. It's been all about the body, nature, being with earth, being grounded, moving slow. We might have had a lot of fatigue this year because that helped us move slow and be with nature and be more grounded. And um, in 2015, it has a little more activity. It's a little more outer. Could be a little more chaotic, but that's why you want to streamline, simplify, and get, get everything battened down, get everything in place. So uh, one of the guides just said, I think they get the picture, Alea. So that's, that's the energy that I'm seeing for, um, for this week, Mercury Retrograde. And then 2015, we'll keep looking at the energy and updating as we get closer to to that energy but happy new year really enjoy okay um yeah major organization major prep learning how to reach vibrations other than breathing what else would you recommend as a starting point there's another question about how to attain very particular vibrations in your divine line. And the mechanism that I use that seems to work for me and, uh, and for other people, you might have your own technique, but I simply invite my higher self. We can do this right now. Do a little energy protocol. I know I've been talking about energy and talking about energetic protocols, but we're just going to watch the energy and really let our higher selves. So I'm just holding that awareness. So when I say higher self, I then kind of flip my awareness up to this higher vibrational aspect of me in a different dimension. And then I invite my body, Davis, higher self, my team's higher self. So it's I invite my higher self, and you can just kind of repeat after me because it's you doing it. I invite my higher self, my body, Davis, higher self, my team's higher self to work with the energetic fields and the guides to activate the vibration of whatever you want, whatever that is. Maybe it's peace, maybe it's calm, maybe it's connection. Just one quality, just one vibration. I'm going to do focus. You get to do whatever you want. And now I'm just holding a gentle awareness. Hold a gentle awareness that your higher self, your body to his higher self, your team are activating that vibration in a higher dimension using their energy fields in their very own unique way and then activating that vibration in the divine line of you, your body, and team. So your higher self is activating that vibration in your divine line. Your body, Davis higher self, is activating that vibration in its divine line that runs through the spine. Your team are activating those vibrations in their own divine lines as they encircle you in another dimension. And then you wait. You breathe. You relax. 
you let some other vibrational aspect of you do the work. And then it starts to reflect down to you here in this realm. I just went like that because I felt this like focus coming in. Oh, that's great. That's cool. Clarity. So that's how you activate very particular vibrations in your divine line. The more you do it, the quicker you'll get. But give yourself a minute, two minutes to do it. It works. And then you can close your eyes. You can breathe, pulling yourself in to that inner river. Imagine literally standing in a column of light, being in that column of light on the front of the spine. Your inner garden hose, your little crystal elevator shaft, however you want to imagine it. And imagine that vibration, that current, that river, that stream of whatever that frequency is that you are intending, flowing in that place, up and down the front of your spine. That's a lovely exercise to do um, if you feel disconnected, if you feel anxious, it would be activating the vibration of calm. You could use the flip it sheet section that, that I just redid today that I'm going to be posting on my blog in a few days um, to determine what is the vibration that you're really, truly intending on embodying, depending on what it is you're, you're challenged by. It has been a true joy and journey to um, connect with you in this way in the conscious conversation. I think I'm going to complete. We ask that you're wrapped in sheets of rainbow light, gently sealing these vibrations in to whatever degree is appropriate for your spiritual evolutionary state. Let it be so. Aho. You have been listening to the Cups of Consciousness show with me, Alea Dow. Receive a free month of the Cups of Consciousness. Go to sevencupsofconsciousness.com. When you get your free month, you will get five cups a week for four weeks. You'll also receive access to a live tall cup of consciousness session. Feel free to review the show. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Aho.